Welcome back to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Justice for All. We have just reached the climax of the first day. No, really, we're still on the first day. Can you believe it? And believe it or not, we are going for... How should I say this? Two cases. Not one. But two cases. That's right. We're going for two cases. So that's what we're going to do this time around. We are going to actually go for two cases. The reason why is because one, one, we're going to need to do that. And two, no, you'll find out why. And I got another subscriber. Awesome. Anyway, um, if I think I missed something, I am not worried because I will indeed plan to, I don't know, plan to check out my, um, my document for the trial and, um, you know, stuff like that there. So in that case, we are going to continue from our safe spot. And let's go. Shall we? We've already talked to you, so moving on. supposed to be here. Let's go back to the hall. Okay, starting from here, we're actually going to go to the detention center. March 21st, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. Ah, uh, the lawyer dude. So what'd you find out? Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. Have you now? I present to you so this impacts Mr. Lawyer, I may be your client, but I hope you will keep yourself out of my personal life. Uh, no, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. You're in attention! Who in the world would... Who in the world are you going to eat with? The security guard? The Celeste Impacts lady. Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. So, um, he's not going to be talking to us for a while, so, um, fuck him, let's go! <laughs> From here to here. 
here. Two here. Two here. Two here. Yes, we're doing a lot of moving here. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel on God's Hotel Room. That's not good. Still have a few questions I want to ask her. Coke bottle. <clears throat> and she has to. She has a psyche lock on her heart, right? Well, we don't have much of a choice. I guess we'll have to come back later. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna move out, right out of here. To the hallway. Hallway. Not actually to the lobby. And back to criminal affairs. And present the following fall of Edgeworth. So that's impacts. This woman is another key to this case. D do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But suddenly she was called away by a production and became Juan Corda's manager. And then a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. But her death was a suicide, right? Yes. But there is still one riddle left unsolved. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. Suicide note that just vanished, hmm? Oh! Let's talk about that note, shall we? Impact's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had had given it. The suicide note. But how do you know Miss Impact had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Corda himself. Mr. Hongo Tokashi. Th the victim. He was found, he was the one who found her body which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Corda hid his own manager's note. <sighs> but why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report, part one of Part one. Suicide report. And well, in that case, um, what about the suicide report? I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts. Like that one. That has two. Two parts. What you have what you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here's the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name is Adrian Andrews! Miss Andrews? Um, what'd she do? She she 
try to kill herself? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try and kill herself. You think she's a strong career woman. That's just her image. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. Secret? Her uh, codependency. That's the key word. Codependency. The word most unsuited to describing that woman. about that codependency. Shall we? So how are Adrian Andrews and codependency related? Adrian Andrews attempted suicide. Was a few days after the death of Celeste Impacts. And? And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Quite possibly. Because she had Lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she... Her pillar of strength, her mentor, Celeste Impacts, was gone forever. That's why. But why would the... Is that what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She is a person who looks for someone she can trust unconditionally. And once she finds that someone, she blindly follows them. Without someone to guide her, she feels uneasy and can't carry herself through life. And that's... that's a codependency. When Celeste Impacts suddenly commits suicide, the world before her turn pitched up. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then that means her super confident attitude? It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. Emulation. So we get the attempted suicide report. So, we need to head back to the hotel. And of course, to Ungard's hotel room. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Ungard's hotel room. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. It looks like she's talking to someone. That's Francisca von Karma. Miss von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I am his lord, so. You've got some guy following me around. Following you? It's you, Miss Von Carmen. You're the one doing the following! Girls? You're always... You're always following that... Miss your detective with the little beard. Me? Falling after Scruffy. Don't make me laugh. I'll show you something interesting, little girl. Oh my god, she's trolling! What is that? Electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fools every move. That noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for poor Detective Gumshoe now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Agent Andrews! 
Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. <laughs> UNDERSTOOD! Goddamn, bitch. Do you have to whip everybody you see fit? Uh, all right. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems to not say anything, she... Very much so. And to be quite honest, I tap that. <laughs> Moving on! I think it's now time to break that little lock of hers. And she has four locks. And she's holding the King of Fighters card. Motive for murder. Why was one card on murder? If you ask me, I think you know the reason why he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. Ungar's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answer? The truth is I was not that close to Mr. Cordon. You were not that close. That's right. I've never been good at hiding. I've never been good at being intimate with another person. You're not good at being intimate with another person? Somehow I highly doubt that. For behold, I present to you this magazine clipping. Take that! You and Mr. Corridor had an intimate relationship, did you not? Silly third rate tablet article. If you even had even if you even have half the, your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people bought into this story. Hmm. That's to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self. Stay on her good side. In any case, I despise into personal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? I mean, you need to get close to Mr. Corda. As if there was ever such a need. Can you get close to Mr. Corridor for this present's sake? That person's sake is Celeste Impacts. Take that! Celeste Impacts, your mentor. Mike, do you know about Celeste? Miss Impact. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Cordo's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Cordo so you could find out more about her de suicide. You have a great imagination. And she is sweating. I like it when women sweat. You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a future third rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? Th th there was no mystery surrounding her death, none. It'd be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Was there no mystery at all? I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. Let's present this. Take that! This impact suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corda. On. And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corda. I, I, I sat quite quietly and listened to and listened to your insulting ramblings. 
It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that. Her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give. However, I don't think that's who you really are. I have evidence that says otherwise. It's proof that Celeste's impact was someone very special to you. Take that! Miss Andrews, you... You went through it too, didn't you? Went through what? A suicide. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, and you live by yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is... That is all just a lie. Like the kick. A facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. That's that! You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! When Celeste passed away, so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corda of hiding Miss Impact's note? You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close. Am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What, what do you mean? What topic did we... What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why was the victim... It was, why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the most likely to want Mr. Cordar dead. M me? Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Broken is broken! Murder for murder! It's true. I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small, and I really don't have a lot of confidence of self confidence. I pushed against all that, though. I tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews, this is one thing, it's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret, mine and mine alone. I'm, I'm sorry. Probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden a suicide note. And that someone was one quarter. Celeste, without her, without her, I became scared. Everything, everything seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corda to recover her suicide note, correct? like the tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they would keep the celebrity world burning. Pearl has nothing to say. But as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just didn't suit me, that's all. Well, 
that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so. I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. This ain't true. If, if people found out about my weakness, I I would sooner choose to die than live. Oh, all right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. It's Andrews. I guess she's the always thinking type. She never says anything carelessly. It seems. Thank you very much. Missing it carries or something. What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Uh, uh, oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my hand. What is it? Looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly. Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be out. I must leave Miss Unguard in your capable hands. Well, we got nothing else to do, so let's move to the hallway. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel Hallway. Well, I think we gather about all we can. Why am I missing my Is she all right? Oh, Pearls. She looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and has been wake and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Miss Yank? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh no! I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay, really. I'm fine, I you know. You don't look fine to me. Carol, you're back. Anyway, moving on. From the hallway to the hall. To the lobby. And lastly, back to the office. March 21st, right in company offices. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impact says I know? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's plot. Never. It's the Konami code! Oh, Mr. Nick the Transceiver! Hello? It's the law office of Wright and Company. Mr. A. Terry, you're not answering a phone. Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I will not come within a few feet of her this whole time. Which is why I suppose she is absolutely famished. What? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost, wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her! Very well. <laughs> Maya, is that you? So come, ask me anything you want about her. Let's talk about that kidnapper, or rather, situation. How's Maya? 
She's safe for now. That kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how do you know? As soon as she was... As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note. She left. Then I got as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like this. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper. The kidnapper! What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh! Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? Date, time, location unknown! Starving. I could really go for some apple pie. There are two items we need to figure out right here. I mean, it's kind of like the sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. So, we're going to examine two things while we're here. You see this right here? Huh? Someone dropped a card here. That looks like a business card. I didn't know a name on it. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. And of course, the door. Locked. Hmm, but this door is locked. Seems easy enough to open. A TV the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I can use. Oh, that's it! The shell card! If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius! All right, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. Click. I did it. Okay, now get the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting. Forward. And, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, really, that's it. That That's day one. So, anyway, um, when we come back... It will be an uphill battle because Phoenix has to go for broke in the one-shot courtroom battle that will somehow save his career or cost him his life. Whichever comes first, stay tuned for more Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Justice for All. Stay tuned for the next part. <laughs> 